Thank you for that beautiful music. Thank you all for attending today. I'm Jared Brookman, MSSU Athletic Director and friend of Derek Moore. We are gathered here to honor his memory and the impact he had on so many of our Missouri Southern family in the short time that he was here. Coach Moore was in his first year on the Missouri Southern football staff as the offensive line coach. He was appointed as position coach when he arrived here early last spring. Derek came here after three seasons at Division I Western Illinois University in Macomb, Illinois, where he assisted with the offensive line. He had coaching stops at nine different institutions in 14 years of his professional career, and at every stop, he was remembered fondly by all that he worked with and all of those that he coached. He also coached at Northern Iowa, Upper Iowa, Lincoln University, St. Cloud State, as well as other stints in Ames High School, Iowa Central Community College, and Ellsworth Community College, where he actually got his start in coaching. Derek graduated with a bachelor's degree from Buena Vista University in 1999 and earned his master's degree from St. Cloud State in 2005. Coach Moore was the proud father of his son Elijah, who will be turning seven this year. It is obvious that Derek had a distinguished career over the 14 seasons doing what he loved in a profession that can impact in such a positive way so many young men and women. He was able to set a positive example to these young men in a time in our society where there's such a lack of effective leadership for this generation. In my humble opinion, Derek was called on a regular basis some of the best labels you can possibly have, coach, brother, and dad. Please allow me to introduce at this time head coach Daryl Day to say a few words. You know, I'd like to start off and say um, how much we appreciate all the calls and the texts and the emails from all the Joplin area, surrounding areas, and it's really been, you know, from around the country, this enormous outpouring of compassion is truly hum humbling and, uh, and very much appreciated, but um, says a lot about the people from this area and how classy they are. Joshua 1. Verse 9 reads, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. You know, we're here today to celebrate the memory of Derek Moore. That's a key word, celebrate. We've had days to mourn, but now it's time to celebrate him. We're here to recall the good memories and the good feelings we have about him. And I was struggling trying to figure out, you know, Lord, give me something to talk about. Give me something to say. I don't know what to do to stand up in here in front of all these people. And felt him kind of tell me, he said, just what would Derek want you to say? Get up there and say what Coach Moore would want you to, stay, to say. You know, Derek was a fun guy. He really was. He was always smiling. He's always full of life, he had a great smile. And he looked kind of like a prison guard, but once you got to know him a little better, he, <laughs> he was uh, far from that. You know, he was a big old teddy bear, soft-hearted. You know, I don't think I ever met anybody, a truly don't, that could eat like him. I mean, he, that boy could put away some groceries. He sure could. He was always fun to mess with. I used to razz him, cut up with him, but he was always respectful, he would never, you know, razz back on me because of the position. But I always used to enjoy messing with Derek. Um, he was a lot of fun. You know, we used to compete all the time. If a song was playing, what artist was saying, and who art, what artist was singing, and uh, the game was always on, in the car, at the, wherever. And uh, I think I beat him most of the time, but he, we always had a lot of fun. He was. He was a great guy, you know, he really was. And I know he'd want me to say that. He was a great guy. He used to 
squint his eyes, you know, he'd squint down and he'd say, you never met nobody like me, have you, coach? You never let nobody, I'm one of a kind. He used to say that to me all the time. You know, he, he loved him some Iowa too now. He loved him some Iowa. He was proud of that state. Um, he'd say, hey, coach, you know, John Wayne's from Iowa. Because he knew I loved John Wayne. And he, he want me to tell you today that Iowa did beat LSU one time. <laughs> one time. You know, he want me to tell you he was a good golfer. He wasn't. <laughs> he want me to tell you he was sexy. He wasn't. And he want me to tell you that he was the best looking ball headed coach on the staff. And I'm definitely not saying that one either. <laughs> He'd want me to compliment him today. And he's probably chuckling right now, looking down, saying, I got you again, coach, because now you got to compliment me. And he's right, I do, so I will. You know, Derek Moore was a good man. He was an honest man. He was a good coach. He loved football. He loved his players. He was a solid person. He was loyal. He was hardworking. You know, he loved being here at Missouri Southern. He really did. His, his mother and his brother came in, and we had him over at the house the other night, and we all prayed together, and there was some healing going on, and his mother said, you know, I haven't seen Derek that happy since this past year in probably 10 to 15 years. He loved being here. He loved Missouri Southern. He made a lot of friends real easy. He was a good person. He was a good friend. You know, it was no doubt he had your back at all times. He was a good father. And there wasn't a day that didn't go by that he didn't get on that phone and talk to Elijah and tell him that he loved him. I'd hear him saying it on the phone or on Skype. And if he would have me say anything to you today, and it would be, if you have children, and one day many of you will, take the time to tell your children you love them, to put your hands on them and hold them and tell them that you love them. He did that. He was a good father. I know he want me to tell you to never take life for granted, to cherish it, to recognize your opportunities, to see the moment, to use this as an inspiration to you, to do better, to get better, to be better. I know he want me to tell you that Jesus Christ died for his sins. And he died for my sins. And he died for your sins. He want me to tell you that. He want me to quote John 3.3. 3, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Derek Moore would want me to tell you that. He'd want me to say that there is no doubt that his offensive line will face this tragedy and turn it into victory. Because that's the way he trained them. To face tragedy and turn it into victory. Boy, I like that. By overcoming the tough times. I know he want me to say that to you. Because tough times don't last. Tough people do. And he taught his kids tough. Now, I know if you've seen us play, you probably noticed that we... We run the, lot, we run the ball a little bit. Well, when you run the football, the offensive line leads the way, and you gain ground. You're going forward. You move forward. And I know that's what we need to do today as a team, as a university, as a family, is we need to move forward. We need to gain ground. We need to overcome these tough times by moving forward. We need to understand that we've been knocked down. Yeah, we've been knocked down. But we need to get up, brush ourselves off, and get back in the fight and move forward in life. We must overcome these tough times together. Quitting is not an option. Now, I don't understand why this senseless tragedy happened. And as each day goes by, my pain's going less, but my anger is growing more. It's a shock to us all. It doesn't make sense. But I do know this. I know that our God is a just God. 
I know that our God is a living God, and that I know our God is a loving God. And one day we'll get to ask our God all these questions that we have for him, and he'll answer us and say, this is why, and we'll understand it and agree. I have that faith. I hope you do too. And in closing, I'd like to say that may our prayers go out to Derek's family, his son Elijah. So please hit your knees tonight and ask God to comfort them. And let's all honor Derek Moore's memory by moving forward and overcoming these tough times. You know, I never met anyone like Derek Moore. He's one of a kind. And I know he wants me to say that. As I gathered my thoughts uh, about what to say uh, during my portion of the ceremony, I've, I've got to admit I, uh, it was difficult to wade through all the emotions uh, to find a message. I'm just like all of you. Um, my feelings are bouncing around between shock, sadness, loss, anger, confusion. But I'm hanging on to hope, resilience, and determination, just like Coach Moore would expect. So in my few minutes here, I want to focus on what I think Derek would want us to highlight, and that's hope, resilience, and determination, because that's the man I knew. And my friendship with Derek started the first time we met. You know, there are just some people that when you meet them, you automatically uh, find a friendship, and, and Derek was one of those guys. <clears throat> I recall early in the summer, uh, just after I'd started, I was still getting ignored there, so uh, we were seated at the same table at a, a coach's meeting. Well, actually, it was a, a workshop that Dr. LaPierre was putting on, um, and doing a marvelous job, by the way, Pat, wherever you are. Uh, but the mannerisms and expressions that Dr. LaPierre uses, um, they're funny, even when she's trying not to be. So, uh, you know, Katie did this, and Katie did that, and those fingers on. And uh, Derek and I were having a really hard time not laughing at inappropriate times. Um, we made it through, though, Dr. LaPierre, I know you're here somewhere, um, without charge. But he told me later, after it was over, he said it was really tough not to laugh out loud. And the only way that he could stop himself from laughing was to hold his breath, but it made his bald head turn red. So <laughs> that was an issue that he didn't want to have to deal with. But you know, it was later in the very same workshop that uh, I learned a little more about Derek's clear-minded honesty. It was an exercise that uh, Dr. LaPierre had all the coaches do. I know the coaching staff will remember this. Uh, she asked them to, um, to answer the simple question of, uh, or answer, finish the sentence, I got into coaching because. The coaches, you remember uh, going through that exercise. And then she had, she called on people, or she had folks stand up and, and uh, read what they had, had written. and. Um, you know, there were the things that, that you would expect, and most of them dealt with, you know, molding young lives and having a positive impact and, um, you know, steering students, uh, athletes towards success and et cetera. Uh, but Derek, he, he wasn't called on, but he wrote big, and I could see, since I wasn't participating, I could see what he had written. And uh, he simply said, I got into coaching because I'm competitive, and I got too old to play. <laughs> And you know, that's an honest answer. <laughs> and I gotta, gotta take it back on what Coach Day said. Derek was happy here at Missouri Southern. He was as happy as he's ever been. Actually, I promised his brother Ian that I would pass that message to you. He made me promise that I would let you know that. And I asked Ian exactly what it was that Derek found that was so engaging about this place. And he, he of course, mentioned the, the wonderful coaching staff he worked with and all the great players. He loved you. But there was something else. There was something more. And he said it was the spirit and character of this university. And that's what he found so magnetic. You know, it's difficult to define because it's a feeling. You know, I feel it. And I know you feel it, too. I think it's, it's sort of the magic of, of being part of something that's important. Something that's bigger than any one of us by ourselves. 
It's a feeling knowing that together we are just many, many, many times stronger than we would be alone. Simply, it's, it's mo so strong. You know, I don't know who came up with that hashtag first. I saw it on Twitter and then I, I read it in the Joplin Globe, but it's the perfect description of the qualities that we need to move through this process of grieving and onto recovery. We need to be most so strong for each other. We need to be most so strong for this campus and community. And we need to be strong to honor our friend Derek. So how can we be strong for and honor our friend Derek? Well, here's how. You couldn't be around Derek more than five minutes before you understood that he loved his six-year-old, soon to be seven-year-old son Elijah more than anything in the world. And Elijah loved his daddy. He's also a Lions fan, as you can see from this note he left for Coach Day this summer when he was visiting. Several groups have stepped forward to raise money for college fund for Elijah. And if you want to be most so strong for Coach Derek Moore, then give generously to this fund and encourage others to do the same thing. We'll be sending out additional information about the college fund as it develops, and we intend to make a major push for Elijah's future at the football game Saturday. Football team, you can honor Derek by playing your tails off, and I know you will. The rest of us can honor him by raising as much money for little Elijah as we possibly can. It's a simple game plan. We just need to execute. I started my remarks this afternoon with a focus on hope, resilience, and determination. And that's where I'm going to conclude. We can gain hope from a higher power. Resilience takes heart. And determination is simply a matter of fixing our minds on a goal and never giving up. In a nutshell, it's about being most so strong. Thank you. In just a moment, I'm going to ask Coach Day to come and, and uh, offer a prayer to conclude our memorial ceremony. But before I end, I would like to join in too in, in thanking the members of our great community for all the support that the emails, the texts, phone calls that we've had. We're indeed blessed to live in this community. Coach Day. Y'all don't mind, we'll say a prayer that we pray together as a team. If you'd like to stand up, you would be included. Just chain up if you would. First, we're going to pray for Elijah, and then we're going to say the Lord's Prayer. Honored man, Lord, you. Lord, we just come before you today to thank you and praise you. Praise you most for your sacrifice on the cross for us, Lord, that you died for each and every soul in here's sins that we may have the way to, to approach, Lord, to be welcome into heaven through your blood that you shed on the cross. Lord, we pray for Elijah. We pray for his future. We pray for him and his understanding that he'll grow to be the man that his father was, that he'll that you'll bless his hands, you'll bless his steps, and his understanding, Lord. That he'll come to know you in his, as he grows, Lord. We just praise you. We thank you for dying on the cross again for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. 